Oh dear, really must change those washers soon. Well, uh, this kitchen of mine, it's small, but uh, it's a happy hunting ground for those interested in old appliances. I have several here. Uh, if I open up the cupboard here, there's a tower chip fryer from the very early 80s there. Still works perfectly. And likewise a tower slow cooker, which I think my mother had in the late 70s, so that's even older. And then up here, a rather funky juice machine. And of course lurking at the back there, a very old blower fan from a furnace that I use as an extractor. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't half go too. Now, moving outside there, Kenwood Chefette mixer there that comes from the very early 70s i haven't got the liquidizer thing for it anymore because sadly the uh, plastic became brittle and the thing started to leak and um, with you having to stand it on top of the unit i thought it was a bit risky shall i say but the only thing i've had to do to the mixer itself down the years is to re-grease the gearbox actually spins the beaters round and round the drum turns as well, the basin turns round. It's not powered, it's just driven by the action of the mixing. Then, of course, Ancient Kettle from uh, July 1940, played by Swan. Uh, chrome on copper with the usual uh, overheat protection. So if it boils dry, there's a spring-loaded pin in there, just shoves the plug out with a big crash. Now... This thing here, it's not that ancient, it's, I suppose that's about 97, I had that, but it's still giving good service. But it does show you how things had gone down a bit by then, because uh, very thin steel compared to uh, some of the older appliances. And a lot of people see my toaster and they say, oh, you've got one of those retro toasters. No, I don't. That's the original Morphy Richards toaster from the 50s. And the only thing I've had to do here is to silver braze the elements a couple of times. Up there, my parents' old Melita coffee machine made in West Germany. It says underneath, I believe. And I know if I do want real coffee, that thing will work as good as it did the day it was made. Even that little food processor there is fairly elderly, and again a Kenwood, that was why I got it, because it had Kenwood on it. And it was actually made here in England. Amazing. <laughs> Not China. Here we have the wartime austerity swan kettle. Uh, that was made in July 1940, as I say, so this one must be later. Because uh, by then, perhaps... The reality of the uh, wartime shortages had begun to bite a bit, and uh, so chroming was obviously off the menu. And uh, it hasn't even got any feet underneath it, this thing. I'll have to uh, rig something up for that. But it's looking much better since it's been descaled. Um, funny thing was, descaling tablets, yep, they work well up to a point. But so did cheap vinegar from Lidl. <laughs> so who's kidding who? Now, here is a thing from a different age. This is part of the old servant's bell linkage that was installed in this house when it was a family home. Beside every fireplace was a cord to pull or a handle to press and that used to uh, pull on the pieces of wire, move these little brackets up and down, and eventually ring the bells in the kitchens, which are below my drawing room. Where I am now in my kitchen, I think that was the old uh, scullery and laundry and all that sort of thing. Because uh, there's no fancy fireplace down there, but there is a chimney, so looks like they could have had a big old boiler or something in there. That's no way to talk about the mother-in-law, is it? I <laughs> couldn't resist that one, sorry. But uh, upstairs now they've had to redo the whole frigging thing. And all the tubes and the wires that they ran down and the signs of uh, 
Victoriana have been swept away, I'm afraid. Another thing up there was the presence of a large quantity of gas piping, because this building was originally lit by gas. <laughs> ah, dear, all very Downs and Abbey, I know. Now, here we have a 1950s oil-filled radiator, and this one came with a certificate saying it had all been uh, pat-tested by an expert and it was all found to be okay and the certificate was still in date when I found it on a skip. Very interesting that, um, having a certificate from a so-called expert because the power cable was actually a piece of old lighting cable and uh, not rated for this application at all. And it was the flat stuff and furthermore the earth wasn't even connected and given that this heater is made of metal, yeah, <laughs> so so much for experts. If you want a real cock up, get an expert. Now, over here is ye olde microwave. Now, I've lived here for 20 odd years, and I got this as factory refurbished. So, uh, it wasn't exactly new when I had it, so you're probably looking at um, very late 80s, I should think. The only repair I've ever had to do on this one was to change the light bulb inside that comes on when you open the door. And apparently it's one of the very first to have the uh, touch pad rather than push buttons. But as you can see, the quality of those days shines through because uh, literally the stainless steel interior is immaculate. The plastic mesh, the metal underneath on the door that hasn't started to come away in any way, shape or form. The door still fits nicely and closes properly. Everything still works, touch wood. And uh, this particular one was made in Japan by Sharp, and uh, so it's a genuine one, rather than some piece of chinky crap, to uh, use a phrase that uh, George Fiddler often says. Now this kettle is much older. Uh, a lot of people now, they think that the concealed element is a new thing, but uh, as you can see, it jolly well isn't. Reset button there is on the left in case it ever boils dry and cuts out, and the element is concealed in that bulge underneath. The feet on it are made of porcelain, believe it or not. And the handle, yep, it's either porcelain or wood. Very difficult to tell which, but there's no mistaking the very old worldy on the hob, or even above the fire, sort of kettle shape, is there? It's very traditional. All they've done is shove an element <laughs> underneath it. <laughs> ah dear, and of course the ancient um, JVC video star, or Ferguson video star, or was it a bed, or was it an ITT telerecorder? They came in all sorts of different variations, as did. And likewise, the Mitsubishi TV, again from late 80s. So, uh, all still working. Um, it is possible to use such kit with a Freeview box. Uh, you have to get the right one. It has to output the Freeview signal through the old-fashioned um, coaxial plug, rather than just having a through way for the old-fashioned coaxial analogue signal. But, uh, they are available. There's a firm in Wales that makes them. Now, this English electric fridge, well, I found this dumped years and years and years ago. Not long after I moved here, I needed a fridge, of course. And this was dumped, and I brought it back, cleaned it up, left it for a day to settle, and then switched it on, and blow me down, it worked. <laughs> and uh, it's been working ever since. Oh, I've recently uh, just defrosted this. Now, English Electric is a firm, well, railway enthusiasts know about English Electric, and so do some aviation enthusiasts. Because um, they made planes and trains and power stations and power equipment, whopping big transformers, distribution systems for all over the world. And uh, as well as that, they made more humble appliances like this fridge. 
and uh, the English Electric Liberator automatic washing machine was uh, one of the first automatics we had in this country. There was a matching dryer as well. But, uh, again, it just shows you how good things used to be made. Uh, you can see the plastic lining inside the door and the cabinet. Now this usually splits and cracks, doesn't it, on a more modern fridge. Not on this one it doesn't. It's still as good as new. The top is stove enamel and was originally intended for uh, somebody to roll out pastry on. <laughs> Uh, most people don't bother anymore, do they? I mean, I know the feeling. I, too, have said. And there's no magnetic seal on this. Uh, it's a catch there. So, uh, not particularly kiddie-friendly. I have to tell any small kiddies that come here, you know, do not put your hand in there, because, you know, if you trip it, it's going to bloody hurt. But, as you see, everything is still here. It all works. It's not cracked or split or horrible at all made of very heavy gauge metal and uh, as I say recently I've defrosted this old thing because it was getting a bit epic in there like an iceberg now very important thing with these if you've got an old fridge like this or an old freezer and you're defrosting for God's sake don't be tempted to poke about and try and get the ice off more quickly because the thing is, if you make a hole in the gas system on here, the gas will escape, and then it won't run. But because the eco-Nazis banned the use of the refrigerant in these things some years ago, you can't get it anymore, so you're stuffed doubly. You know, it's no good even trying to solder it. And a refrigeration engineer told me some years ago that you can't use the new stuff in old appliances like this because it's not suitable for some reason. I think he had said something about the um, viscosity of the oil in it or something like that. The compressor won't like it. Now, there's a little tiny capillary tube there. You probably can't even see it. And it's filled with a gas which expands and contracts at a ridiculous rate compared to what air does at normal temperatures. And uh, that's what controls the motor. When the fridge becomes too warm, the gas expands, a bellows switch in the back is switched on, supplying power to the motor, the starter kicks in, and away she goes. And then as the fridge cools down, the gas then uh, contracts, the switch drops out, shutting off power to the motor, and uh, you just wait for the sequence to start again. But uh, as I say, if you ever defrosting it don't be tempted to prod about because uh, if you drop the guts and the gas disappears well you'll bug it simple as that i remember some years ago someone had now had a fridge freezer which was fairly ancient and it was running all the time didn't matter what you did whatever it was it turned it into an iceberg and the thermostat had gone so I worked, we worked this out between us on the phone, and he went and got another thermostat. Now, you're not going to believe this next bit. When he couldn't work out how to get the full length of the new thermostat tube into the fridge freezer, because it went from the front of the casing on the ice box and right round the back, and it was all carefully laid out. It was easy enough to do. But when he couldn't work out how, he cut the bloody tube. So, of course, the gas in there escaped. And you've guessed it, the fridge freezer just ran continuously. Sure, you can't help some people, can you? Jesus H. Christ. <laughs> oh, dear. Yep, and Donkey Warmer's BSR McDonald 8 track still there to be uh, attended to at some point in the not too distant future, I hope. I found this thing the other day. It must be early 90s, I should think, because it's black, 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 isn't it? And, uh, we haven't got three cassette decks. You might think we have, but we don't. Made by Hinari, and it's called a disc deck. And you can see there the old tape decks opened up quite happily. Strangely enough, the, let's say, it made by Hinari, but the tape mechanism is a copy of the mechanism used in those 1980s Philips boom boxes. But it doesn't seem to have the red Leicester cheese gears in it. 
because it does still work they both still work well there's a bit of a hum on it I think it's a right hand channel so it probably needs a couple of new capacitors and then here is a CD player and, uh, must be must be quite a quite a rare thing I should think at this time to have a CD player built in and uh, it's a very odd arrangement because instead of going in a straight line from the, from the middle outwards the lens goes on a sort of arc you can see how it's curved but uh, sadly the lens doesn't go at all it just won't have it so uh, although it's there it don't go but the sound on this isn't bad you've got a graphic equalizer for left and right and then your balance control tuning various different functions there's an auxiliary in and a phono in so presumably you could connect either you know a magnetic cartridge moving coil or a ceramic if, if you put it on the auxiliary and there's your cd button master volume control headphone plug on the front um, two microphone inputs and the speakers fit on the back there on these little these little terminals little spring-loaded jobs but uh, yeah quite an interesting looking piece of kit anyway that's uh, the tour of the museum finish for now <laughs> see you soon